Hello, welcome to the construction show. We have a product promo for BMK and we've got Mike Stackhouse. He he is the director of national sales for BMK. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad we're, to be here. We're going to talk about the specifics of the product, but uh, I just want to jump right into something I saw online. Uh, I was watching a video of a company testing your product and they were, they so they had the, the, these poles lined up and the one they pulled the pole and the pole broke before the product did, which is, to me, wild. Yes. Um, that test was conducted quite a few years ago. It was a large investor-owned utility that operates primarily in the Midwest. Uh, they were evaluating the three manufacturers or producers of polyurethane foam backfill. And ultimately, they pulled to destruction. They wanted to see whether the foam would fail or the pole would fail first. And in the case of our foam, the pole failed before the foam did. It's pretty incredible to watch. And then, because I, I did see a chart, actually, just in terms of there's different strength metrics. Maybe you could walk those through, uh, but it sort of shows a different product line and sort of where's your stacks up, which was on the top. <laughs> sure. Um, ASTM is the governing standard for polyurethane foam backfill. Our product and our guarantee to our customers is that our product will always surpass the minimum requirement. Current production, we test out between 80 and 86 PSI pretty regularly. What does that mean in, in real-world application? You're going to get a consistent fill from our product time over time over time. Well, let's actually talk, because this is a product promo, so let's jump into what is the, what is the product itself? The product itself is a four-pound closed-cell polyurethane foam. We offer two different versions of that foam. We offer a hydrophilic, which we often refer to as our standard product offering, and we offer a hydrophobic. The difference between hydrophilic and hydrophobic, hydrophilic will allow water to get mixed in with the polyol and the blended iso. Uh, water controls density. Density controls strength. So we don't want to minimize or change the density of the product. Um, if you're working in a wet hole or a damp hole situation, we promote that you use hydrophobic foam that resists mixing with water. Mm. Um, both products, whether it's hydrophilic or hydrophobic or four-pound closed cell, uh, the strength ratings are very similar. Um, yields are the same. Mm. So one will actually take on water, one will not. Oh, okay. And the, and the expansion is it's quite quick, right? Yes, and the expansion is about 18 to 1 its liquid volume. So wow. um, one gallon of blended product produces about two and a half cubic foot of solid foam. Wow. So once the product is blended, and this is an exothermic product, so it requires the blending of an iso and a polyol, that kicks off a chemical reaction, which is an exothermic reaction. That entire process from the blending to the curing takes about 15 minutes well okay i was going to say i actually didn't realize um that when I, when I, we first set up this interview uh that you're actually you're you're making this here in the u.s right we are this product is domestically produced all the manufacturing is done just outside of st louis in earth city missouri right we mix toll blend package and then distribute from earth city so yes we're a, a usa based company is this application for, like, would you put it in a whole, like, thousands of poles, or is it for specific applications? Is it to protect certain poles? Where, where are some of the benefits of it and applications you'd see it? So when the product was initially reduced, the utility industry was using primarily wood poles. It does offer some clear-cut advantages to tamp dirt or crushed rock for setting that type of pole. Uh, because it's closed-cell foam, water can't pass through it. Oh, okay. So that below grade degradation that occurs six yeah. to eight inches below the surface, uh, you can pretty much eliminate that if you set your wood poles mm. in a polyurethane oh, okay. backfill. I was wondering too. Actually, I thought I saw. Yeah, I saw a picture right back there. Like emergency response in that. Is this sort of good for getting those quick? Like, it is. Um, in most storm restoration efforts. Um, or natural disasters, water tends to be one of the, the key elements to that. When you try to tamp mud or wet dirt, 
you you don't have very favorable results. Right. Most utilities are using an auger to open up a hole. Right. More and more utilities are going to a hydroevacuated hole. With conventional augering, there is some native soil mm. that's available to go back in the hole. If we're dealing in a wet environment, that wet soil is more than likely mud. So yep. with the hydroevacuated hole, there is no spoils to go back in the right, hole. Right, because they're taking it. Because it ends up as a mud slurry that goes off somewhere to be repurposed. Um, foam becomes an excellent product mm -hmm. in both of those installations, right. storm restoration opportunities. Um, because of the hydrophobic nature of the foam, it won't mix with water. So if we have damp soil that we're trying to set a power pole in, the foam expands because of its quick cure time. The pole is able to go up in 15 minutes. They can start hanging either transformers or other equipment on it or pulling wire against it. And their restoration efforts are just sped up. Right. right. And I guess even like transportation of this because it's, it's kind of a small because, product that gets larger. Yes. This box that's on the table with us here, um, this particular size packaging, we offer three different size kits in this packaging. A two and a half cubic foot, three seven five cubic foot, and a five cubic foot. The only difference is the amount of liquid that each jug right. contains. Yeah. Um, so portability and transportation definitely an advantage over hauling crushed rock or right. in native soil. Um, we don't need any additional equipment in order to mix this. Every kit is prepackaged. Uh, it's going to come with the proper amount of A and B solution. Yeah. It's going to have a mixing blade and a clean-out stick. Um, the premise behind our kitting is dump the contents of both A and B into the box, attach the provided blending device to a cordless drill, blend it, pour it out of the box, the empty jugs go in the box, everything that remains goes off to landfill. Okay, so the transport side makes sense. Now, the other question I was thinking, I'm sure people stock it, but then there's... Um just knowing how much to bring. How do you sort of guide people on that? So on our website, we offer a couple of almost invaluable tools. One of them is a void fill calculator. Oh, okay. Um, if the customer will provide us, whether it's a round or a square pole, uh, the diameter of the pole, the diameter of the hole, and the depth that they wish to set this particular pole, if they provide us with those three values on the void fill calculator, it will calculate a yield that they need right. to meet. Um, it will also pre-populate the commercially available size kits that we have. Mm. So let's say the example says they need 5.86 cubic feet. We would recommend that they use a six cubic foot kit. Right. Um, that helps them determine whether they buy a pallet of six foot or if they buy five foot. I'm sure I'm not the first person to ask, what about the environmental side of this as a product that goes in the ground? We have gone to great lengths to uh, seek and receive USDA recognition as a bio-preferred product. Um, there's nothing toxic or hazardous or caustic um, utilized within the production of our product. So when you blend the ISO and the poly all together, you basically form a chemical rock that is an inert, um, nothing harmful to the uh, prevailing environment around it. Oh, uh, no chemical leaching, so we can't contaminate. People must have this almost like on emergency standby, right? So we are the industry leader when it comes to shelf life. We offer an advertised twenty-four month shelf life. Um, We'll guarantee that the product will perform 24 months after production. There's an indefinite shelf life, mm. but uh, as part of an an industry governed by regulations, we have to advertise something. So, so you have, you pick two years. Two years. <laughs> if the product were to sit stagnant on a shelf for an extended period of time, there's always the possibility that the water, the controlled amount of water mm. in the B side, could begin to separate from the other chemicals. Right. By introducing the B into the box first and blending it for about 10 right. or 15 seconds, we That'll just simply it. guarantee that we reintroduce right. that controlled amount of water into the rest of the polyol. Yeah, and, um, and what is the distribution model? Is it direct to the user? Our distribution model is through 
electrical wholesale distributors. Oh, okay. So we have an entire network which somebody can research and and discover on yeah. our website, yeah, we'll bnkproducts.com. Yeah. Uh, but we prefer to manufacture in volume, sell in truckload quantities, right. and then let our distributor partners right. redistribute. Yeah, so much fun. Thanks for doing this, um, Mike, and uh, I hope we do it again. It's been lots of fun. Well, thank, thank you. you for having me as a guest today. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, let me tell you, you sent the website. www.bmkproducts.com. Okay, and we'll put that We'll put that in the description. It'll also slide out in the tab. Connect with Mike right on LinkedIn as well. Follow their company. We'll see you on the next episode of The Construction Show.